So we're talking about conversational skills. And there are four of them that we need to think about. Speaking, obviously. Listening, it's a two-way thing. Conversation has to be two ways. Then we have processing. A lot of what we talk about here is processing, thinking about it and thinking in English as and when we can. And then the fourth one is comprehension, understanding. So we listen or we speak and behind it all, there's processing, there's thinking and there's comprehension, understanding. Those are the four primary conversational skills, but they're not in the correct order. It may surprise you, seeing as how conversation is a speaking activity, but in reality, speaking is the least important of these four conversational skills. And we'll look at exactly why that is true in a moment. So here we have another blue screen. And on it, we have some in interesting information about time spent communicating. In our waking lives, most of us spend about 70% of our time communicating. That's more for some people, less for others, I guess. But if we look at the right-hand side of the graph, note that listening is typically about 45%, which is significantly greater than speaking. And speaking is greater than writing and reading put together. But listening is by far the largest component. An old boss of mine used to tell me, hey, you have one mouth and two ears. That should give you a clue. Listen twice as much as you talk. I've always thought, found that to be good advice. And as far as conversational English is concerned, listening, thinking, and understanding is critical. Here's another blue screen for you to read. Please feel free to pause the video. This is a very interesting look at why we listen, the difference between listening and just hearing, and the purposes behind listening. But I'll let you read through it on your own. So, back to this one, in the correct order. The interesting question that we have to ask here, though, are what are the basic building blocks of spoken English? Here is the answer to a question. It's actually completely sensible. It just doesn't look very sensible. A, down the shops, I want a new charger, you coming? A, down the shops, I want a new charger, you coming? What does that mean? What does it say? What question does it answer? Well, it answers this question. A, where are you going? A, where are you going? Let's look at that in classical English. Where are you going to? Where are you going to? Now we understand. Where are you going to? Is the question that's asked. But the full answer is, I am going down to the shopping area because I want to buy a new charger for my mobile phone. Would you like to come shopping as well? That is classically what we would say, rather, what we would write if we were answering that question in full classical English. But we're not. We're talking about conversational English. So the answer is, where are you going to? Uh, down the shops. I want a new charger. You coming? It's much shorter. It's much faster. And for most people, it's much more natural. That is why you will find it difficult to listen to and understand two English speakers talking together if you don't understand the nature of, converse, of conversational English. So, what are the basic building blocks of spoken English? Well, we write in sentences and we read in sentences, but we talk in and we listen to a mixture of words, phrases, 
grunts and body language. We don't speak in sentences. We don't listen in sentences. Sentences are pretty much for physical and electronic media. That's why conversational English is so difficult. So quick information here on the left. Body language is probably something you've heard of. But just to read it quickly, body language is non-verbal communication in which physical behavior, as opposed to words, are used to express or convey information. Body language can include facial expressions, posture, gestures, eye movement, touch, and the use of space and position. Body language, there's always debate about this, but some people believe that body language can be up to 40% of the meaning uh, in a face-to-face -face conversation. Certainly, body language is the reason why it is much more difficult to communicate uh, uh, it, by phone if you're not a native speaker because you don't get the clues from the body language from the face from the movement of the body and the hands body language is very important and that's something we will spend time on uh, in track c of aea so in school in language centers and even in online classes by and large you are taught correct English, what we call proper English. AEA Track C will help you to learn when, where, how and why we break the rules because that's how conversational English works.